I've been warned about this one. A mate made a version, uh, one, one of these a little while ago and said nothing really fits together very well. All the same, it is a vintage classic. And once again, I'm going to enjoy it. Gaps, lumps, bumps, whatever. This is going to be a beauty. We are talking real classic here. This really is something. Look at that. Red stripe. Marvellous bit of box art. Sickly yellow sky. Pools of smoke. Probably not from bombing. Because the main aircraft haven't got their bomb bay doors open. So it's probably just pollution from industry. And these are flying through. Great bit of industry there. So here we are with an Airfix 172nd Boston which is an American aircraft and probably the best looking Ameri American aircraft of the Second World War. Aesthetics are important folks and one of the best looking aircraft of the Second World War. Everything about it is harmonious marvellously balanced and just some little tweaks here and there that give it real character. This is a beauty. I am looking forward to it. Plus a few bits of advertising. Don't really know those two. Hmm. Oops, scratch bang one. Uh, a lot of passenger aircraft, interestingly. And one Dornier 217 Series 3. Never got around to getting that one. I made a start, so to speak. I've sprayed a kind of green undercoat and I've left, or I've put the tube of glue in there. You never know, they might still be good. Romance. You can't beat the missing parts slip. And there we are with bits and pieces. So I'll get them out and get building. Really, I've done little more than um, put the two sides of any and everything together to uh, get that. Obviously, a few bits in the fuselage, but both sides of the wings, a bit of the tail, and I've got some other uh, tail pieces. A bit scruffy. So both sides, unfortunately they're all green, we'll soon sort that out. So it's another one of those Airfix classics that's making itself, it's moving so rapidly it's unbelievable. Uh, but that's good, I like that. Right, the key problem is that some of the parts, particularly the fuselage and the tail, the two sides don't line up brilliantly. There's a step between one side and the other. Also there, on the back end of the engine, nasal, on both. So on that one I've started. Uh, hacking into it would be too ruder, <laughs> too violent a phrase. But this one might need a bit of hacking into. It just didn't line up. I know I'd glued the wing bit, uh, the uh, tail plane together on the sprue but it was a matter of seconds and the, it, it opened up nicely to take the um, the sort of moving part structurally speaking uh, and it just wasn't happy on that one and the seams along the um, well it joins the fuselage weren't great well they were but the one on this side pointed upwards. The one on that side was not quite pointing down but it was a bit less than horizontal so they've needed some manipulation and it's all going to need filling which is a shame because otherwise it's just gone together fantastically. It is a beauty. Um, so a bit of cleaning up to do which means I've got to leave it well I've got to work on that but I've got to leave the rest of it let it get strong and then get uh, various tools out to smooth all that down. So, a pause. 
figures are in um, two shades of green, two shades of brown on the whole of the aircraft two shades of grey underneath time for mm, glassware and markings I think now we are almost completely there and what I've mm, confirmed to myself kind of unfortunately but kind of not is that the glass various canopies and so on has almost no detail on it whatsoever to follow to create the frames and I was thinking I want to keep this one to the bare minimum one of those bare bones modeling things because I I want it to kind of go through the nostalgic process of just making the simple model giving it a bit of a paint job and putting the markings on and not going to town on all the other bits and pieces so in that case as there's so little to guide us I'm going to leave it because this is one of those it's so simple and straightforward a model it's such an old airfix model I think I need to take a slightly retro approach and just keep it nice and simple that was my plan but now I've confirmed it so there isn't much more to do on this one I've kind of broke my own rule haven't I I've put different men in there's the wrong man in there and I think we've got the right man in there but I've given him a different arm so oh dear anyway I want to keep this one simple and it's a very very graceful aircraft so we don't want to go over complicating the I don't want to go over complicating the visuals because it looks so good. Maybe I'll buy another one. Maybe there's a somebody else does a a more recent version and uh, probably different colours and different markings and then I can go to town on the canopy. I've had some successes with canopies lately so I feel I can pursue that. But not on this one. It's taking all my self-control to keep it simple, but that's what I'm going to do. Right, I said I wasn't going to paint the um, canopy, uh, the glassware, but looking at it outside, I might have to, mightn't I? That's the funny thing about taking the whole thing outdoors. You, well, getting good light on it, that's the thing, uh, and there's very good light today. Um, yeah, you really show up everything, <laughs> which is which can be a complete disaster. Um, this isn't looking too bad. I actually did a third shade of brown and a third shade of green, which I think adds a little surface texture, which is the kind of thing I'm after these days. And there we are with the markings on, and all of that, in general, is showing up the glassware. So I'm going to have to go back indoors and get to work on it. Right, it's done. I've taken it as far as I feel I should. Kind of respecting the age and the nature of the model and the simplicity of the model. And yes, parts didn't fit particularly well. But aside from that, it is one of those gorgeous, straightforward... Uh, old airfix models and I enjoyed every second of it and it is a really good looking aircraft I may have said that before uh, and that's because I'm sincere about it <laughs> the, the interesting thing is when you're model making let's face it um, this isn't gonna fly at the 304 mile per hour maximum it's not gonna hit the 13,000 foot ceiling uh, and all of that it's it's a model so to some level it's the aesthetics count don't they in some way or another the the aesthetics of the object that you have bought and that you want to complete the shape the balance the harmony and this has all of those things um, 
it really is a very, very uh, smart aircraft. This is an aircraft actually with a very interesting history. Just the uh, instructions leaflet alone is chock a block with stuff. It first flew in 1938, so it's just edged in before the Second World War. And it served throughout the entire war and on every front. Um, and the instructions say it was a pilot's air airplane. The French ordered a whole load, uh, getting on for about a thousand, but um, the Second World War really kicked in, and so the uh, British um, scooped those up as France was collapsed, collapsing and took some of the uh, ones that were given or were purchased by Belgium. So that's how the British ended up with the first wave of these. And um, it, you know, it just worked. Everybody who used it thought it was fantastic. Probably something to do with that balance and harmony. I think it is a fine aircraft. There it is a nice little simple, straightforward, old-fashioned model. Um, yes, I might go poking around and look for a different version made by a different company, and really have a bash at it. But there it is, Airfix, old, lovely, just fine. Let's leave it. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you again soon. I'm sure.